When most people are asked what the shape of the Earth is, they'll tell you it is round. However, few can tell you how they know that. Most just believe it because that's what they were taught in school. There are people, however, who because of their occupation or hobbies have direct knowledge of the shape of the Earth. Ham radio operators are one such group. Hams can communicate between distant spots on Earth by bouncing signals off the ionosphere. Hams know by direct experience that this is possible only on certain frequencies and at certain times, depending on conditions in the ionosphere. These conditions vary according to the time of day, season, and the 11-year sunspot cycle, and can be predicted with a degree of accuracy much better than a weatherman can achieve with the weather. Many hams use directional antennas called beams, which concentrate their power in a given direction. Hams know by experience that only the globe model of the Earth gives accurate directions, also known as beam headings. Hams can do this either by using formulas based on the globe model, or by using a special flat map called a great circle map centered on their location. This works only for the location it is centered on, the further you get from that spot, the less accurate it is. So a great circle map centered on Sacramento would work fairly well for a ham in San Francisco, but a ham in Sydney would find it worthless. If the Earth was flat, it would be possible to make a single flat map based on the true shape of the Earth that would show accurate beam headings between any two spots on the Earth, and everyone would be using it. No such map exists because the Earth is not flat. Hams often build their own antennas, and both the length of simple wire antennas and the lengths and spacing of parts of a beam antenna are based on the frequency and the speed of light. Thus, hams have direct experience with and confirmation of the speed of light. Hams also know by actual experience that frequencies in the 30 to 3000 megahertz range VHF through UHF, skip right through all layers of the atmosphere, including the ionosphere, going off into space, and are thus blocked by the curve of the Earth, and are useless for long-distance communication, unless they are somehow reflected by something outside the Earth. Hams can get around this by using satellites, called OSCARs. OSCARs are not geostationary, and can only be used from a given location at certain points in their orbits. Hams use orbital charts or formulas to determine when and where to point their antennas, finding them when and where they should be, and not finding them at other places and times. Thus, hams have direct experience with the nature and orbits of satellites, and know by actual experience that they really do exist. In addition to man-made satellites, some hams use the Earth's natural satellite, the Moon. Hams in distant locations can bounce signals off the moon and thus communicate as long as the moon is visible, in other words, not blocked by the Earth, at each of their respective locations. Because of the distance involved, signals reflected off the moon are quite weak, and hams using moon bounce, also known as EME or Earth Moon Earth, need to use high gain, highly directional antennas. Hams can verify the aim of their antennas by sending a signal and waiting for the echo to come back. By measuring the time it takes the echo to return, 2.4 to 2.7 seconds, and considering the verified speed of light, hams involved in moon bounce can calculate the round trip distance and thus have independent verification of the distance between the Earth and the moon at various points in its orbit, 224,000 through 251,655 miles. This video is a brief summary of a video I posted earlier called The Flat Earth, What Ham Radio Operators Know by WF6I, APOI. For a more detailed explanation of how all this works, and how the moon was proven to be roughly spherical over 150 years ago, see the other video linked in the description.